we didn't have a funny intro for this one. That's disappointing. No, we don't. I'm sure. Was there a funny intro at the last one? Yeah, it's the part where you said that's open. No, that wasn't Disneyland versus Disney World. No, no, that one's just a. That's different. That doesn't need to have a cold open. It's a whole new series. You gotta get everything correct. Oh, I got nothing. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to a uh, new top three. It's a top three for a whole different set of parks this week. In fact, it is a top three for the West Coast. One of two that we're going to be doing based on our recent Disneyland trip. And uh, this week's, we're going to do the top three Disneyland experiences from our recent trip. I picked experiences because I figured it would be weird to just do rides. And we're going to talk about that in the new series that just premiered this week, Disney World versus Disneyland. Um, Christine, thanks for joining me again. Of course. Um, not thank you for stealing all the good top threes, well, but we'll work around it. We had the same experience. <laughs> we'll work around it. I, you should have valued them differently than me is all right. I'm saying. And it's your fault that you didn't. Okay. Uh, let's kick off Disneyland with your number three. Sure. Go for it. So my number three was the Indiana Jones ride. Mm -hmm. um, Indiana Jones and the Forbidden Temple, I mm -hmm. think is the proper name, in Adventureland. Itty bitty Adventureland, because it was so That's cute. That's insulting. It is not. You said that. It's you super said insulting. That on my blog, it is not insulting. It's, it's cute. It's cute. It's. Itty bitty equals cute. Anyway, anyway, point is. Um, Indiana Jones was my number three. Um, I was really pumped for the ride before we went, and it lived up to what I expected. It has like dinosaur technology, but I think it's actually better than dinosaur. Well, I mean, it's different. a little bit different. It's different. Yeah. Dinosaur's pretty scary because dinosaurs when they're scary. right. Indy is like thrilling. It's not necessarily scary. Um, but obviously you go through and I guess you're looking for certain, I don't even know what the whole story was. Really. It's Indiana Jones. He gets it, caught in adventures in the temple. He opened yeah, a door or something. Treasure, like, right. I remember him up against the door. Like, Oh no, the door. Right. Something's um, coming through. But it was just so cool. I think my favorite part of that whole ride was the bridge. Yes. So when you get to a point where you see a bridge ahead of you, but you're not quite in that room yet, and you see like the people in front of you go over it. Yeah. And you're just like, oh my god, am I really gonna go over this suspended bridge in the middle of this huge room? Yeah. And then you finally do, and all this fire shoots up, and it's like super crazy. They really make the room feel huge. They make it really feel like you're in this cavernous. You're in a temple. Thing. Yeah. And then the whole scene with the ball, and I don't, I mean, I, I know I'm probably That scene sense. was what I loved about it, was because I did, I had either forgotten or didn't know about that part, I and I saw it rolling, it. and I was like, oh, do we go backwards? Oh, nope, we're going down, and yes. it was a drop, and it was everybody awesome. Everybody thinks that you're going to go, so so to set this up better, it's the big ball, the, the classic the, one right, that we it's all Right, it's the boulder. The boulder. And it starts to come at you, and you think you're going to go backwards. I think everybody thinks that they're going to go backwards because that would right. be the natural reaction. But instead, the track opens up, and you go, like, down. And under under it. it. And it was terrifying. Yeah. And it was great. My it's favorite so part of that ride, not to make it sound like the ride wasn't good or anything, but the queue was yes. awesome. The queue was really, really impressive. Yeah. And Keith, uh, <laughs> it looked like Keith had a breakdown on it, but he was just playing with this. There's a pipe in one scene. If you like bend it enough times, like the, the ceiling starts collapsing. to pretend to collapse. Yeah. But he just like, without explanation, just started shaking it violently. And I was like, what is Keith go doing? Did he like he lose he it? <laughs> yeah, like what's going on? And it, it, it didn't help that it took like a solid like 15 seconds yeah. before it actually triggered. So it looked like he was just trying to damage property. Yeah. Uh, but it was a really cool cue. It was a really cool cue. It gets uh, better the further in you go. Yes, yes. Uh, that was a good one. My number three was the Matterhorn. I was excited for this one. Uh, I was looking forward to it. I loved it from the second we walked into the parks, and that was more of a weenie than the castle is, in that it just your eye is drawn to it. It's like it looks like the tallest thing might be the tallest thing in Disneyland. 
and it's just always there and it looks really cool it's one of the few things where i feel like and i don't know if it's because i've only been here there for the first time that one time but it's one of the first times i fell for the effect of um force perspective to make something look taller than it is mm -hmm. and it works for me whereas like with the castle or everything in disney world i'm just always aware of the, the trick they're pulling where right. there i just didn't and then the ride itself was great because it was like a fun steel tube coaster that apparently everyone didn't like except for me it's not that we didn't like i mean i liked it i would have liked it more if my body was It was hurting. so bumpy. It was beyond bumpy. It was great. It was no. It's like a massage. Is like, bumpy is like Space Mountain in Disney World. This was like painful. This was like you... I needed a chiropractor. <laughs> no, that no, that you're getting all wrong. It is the chiropractor and it's helping it's you not. out. And it's like you're writing history because wasn't that the first that was the first steel tube coaster? ever yeah, no and i think that's great I, yeah it's, it's not, like riding I, the cyclone i get the nostalgia of it i even like the effects of the yeti i liked all of it yeah stuff. yeah it's just could have been so good. bumpy it was great uh so that was my number three we don't have anywhere to warp to it's weird when we're not warping anywhere I know. we'll just pretend we're warping Rip! that's the warp sound in real life yeah Rip! what's your number two <laughs> sounds like a zipper <laughs> <laughs> My number two was the 60th anniversary Disneyland Forever fireworks. Yeah. Um, they were amazing. Again, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, Rob and I didn't really watch any videos or anything to, so, to avoid spoilers for our trip. Um, we stood in Main Street, so we got to see the projections on the side as well as the fireworks behind the castle. Um, just a note, Rob, I actually decided to look up the fireworks again on YouTube and saw a better view of the productions on the castle that we kind of missed. Oh. And those are really cool, too. It's just really interesting that they have so much stuff going on that no matter where you stand, you kind of get a different experience. Mm -hmm. um, Rob can tell you, and there's proof of this on Keith's vlog. I don't know when it's coming out, but there is video proof that I cried at the end of the fireworks. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> And it was funny because I was holding it in for a huge chunk of the fireworks. There's like, the Mary Poppins scene got me a little bit. The Lion King scene really got me. And I was like, Christine, you're a grown adult. Don't cry during the fireworks. And then for some reason... It must be all this fake snow getting in my eyes. <laughs> Which, by the way, was amazing. Awesome. Like, you couldn't even tell where the snow was coming from. Yeah, they're it good about it. It looks like it just appeared. It was fantastic. Yeah. Um... You know, and they go through all the classic movies and they, they call out to, to Walt's dream a lot. And I don't know what, it was just like the last like 30 seconds. And I was like, oh, I made it through. And then I just started crying. And it was like so terrible because everyone around me was like, oh, Christine, oh, that's so cute. And I'm just like trying to not bawl my eyes out. For what it's worth, I mean, we're talking Disneyland, but during World of Color, the Star Wars sequence, it got to me. It got me really close. I actually started very, um, I want to say, jaded about it, where they started showing Episode 7 footage, and I was like, right. oh, Disney's just promoting the new movie. It's not even out yet. We don't know if it's going to be good or not, right. and they're already putting it in the shows. And then it started showing Luke and Leia, and then Han and Chewie, and I was like, why is this getting to me? This is, I, I haven't even seen the movie yet. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I can just, understand. It just was well done in... I don't know. It really. It, it was. I mean, the whole point of the 60th fireworks is to really talk about how this this park has Waltz. been here for 60 years and what Walt dreamed of yep. and what it's become and what it can become and how much it means to everybody who's there. Yep. And it just it just kind of got to me. For for what it's worth, and I guess this transitions into my number two. Rip. We're warping over to it. Um, I really love how Disneyland seems to have more reverence for Walt than over in Florida, which makes sense because he, he was alive and around for uh, Disneyland. Uh, but I just thought it was really cool because you don't get to see that a lot in Florida. Uh, my number two is It's a Small World. And I put this on my list. My, it's a Small World. Dull. Just do that the whole time while I'm talking about it, though. I'm going to try. So it's, I don't, okay. I don't... 
So I, it caught me off guard because it was, you got to stop. It's too distracting. <laughs> I, can't, I can't talk while you're doing that. It's weird. It's too weird. Um, it caught me off guard because I knew it was different. It's not like I, I was completely surprised by it, but I wasn't aware of how much that would mean to me when we went there. Um, I mean, the main difference, if you've never seen the two, and there will obviously be a uh, Disney World versus Disneyland episode on this, is uh, It's a Small World has an outdoor queue with this really large facade that is essentially the facade from the World's Fair in New York, where the ride originated. And there's there are differences on the inside, which are cool and everything, but for me, the outside, I think, gave It's a Small World the attention and the highlight that like such a iconic ride in Disney history deserves. You go to Disney World and it's like this looks like a, a fair tent or something. And looks the, like I looks yeah, I realize now when you go to the indoor queue, they try to mimic that facade on the indoor like against the wall, but right. it doesn't work. And I you could kind of make the argument, well, well, it's a space thing, but not really because Florida's got a ton of space. You could have given it that size facade and so that really sort of caught me off guard both how great it was to see in person and how beautiful it looked to just like how much of a difference it made for the attraction it made the attraction feel more respected than sort of over in disney world where it's just like oh it's this ride here in the corner squeezed between you know what is it peter pan or no it's across from peter pan whatever it's you know it's it's over there in the fantasy land corner uh, so I know I, re I really enjoyed it and I like the outdoor bit and having just seen Tomorrowland this summer It was cool to see and I don't know if I imagine maybe they shot it there But um, it was cool to see that in person that whole little area. So it was nice. I liked it It was also a bit longer It mm -hmm. had characters in it. Yeah, the like Disney in characters their different like countries Which was something I feel like they could very easily do in yeah. Disney World if they wanted to refurb. Yeah um, yeah, it definitely had a more grandiose sort of uh, presence. Right. And it was nice because I was kind of, Rob can tell you, I was kind of uh, skeptical about going on because I don't normally go on Disney World. I'm always like, oh, it's a small world, whatever. Right. And then I said, okay, I'll go on. And I'm really glad that I did. Yeah. So it was really good. Uh, so your number one, which I feel like is an obvious choice and probably would have been my number one, too, if we weren't splitting them up, is... Mm -hmm. Hold on. RIP! <laughs> okay, we're there. It is Paint the Night, which was... Amazing. Amazing. Like, like amazing to the point that I am obsessing over it. <laughs> amazing to the point that I have been listening to the soundtrack on my way to and from work. I have a bit of a walk. <laughs> to and from my subway station every morning, evening, and I keep listening to it. And There's I've Christine the crazy at... lady. She's dancing to the subway again. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been watching videos of it, and it was just the most incredible thing I ever saw. And I was skeptical because I'm a really big fan of the Main Street Electrical Parade that holds a really big piece of my heart because it was the first parade I ever saw when I was two I was obsessed with it, obsessed with the song. And I remember Keith saying, Christine, I really want to get you front row for this parade. I think you're going to love it. I think you're going to love it more than that. And I was like, no, 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 there's no way. I love that the music throws back to the main yeah. electrical parade a lot. It's a big, big mm -hmm. chunk of it. Um, but it's just updated and modern and fun and dancey. And... Yeah. and Oh, just everything. The car section blew my mind. Uh, even the section of Beauty and the Beast with Belle, that was yep. epic. Like, they, the whole thing was just so great. Um, we even ran into it a second time and then decided to just stand and watch it the whole yeah, second right. time because it was just that good. Um, I don't, yeah, it's just, just thinking about it, it's just like, oh, it makes me so happy. I would argue it's, it's the best parade I've ever seen in my life. Yes, I agree. Um, I think my takeaway from it that I really loved is there's this image that I have in my mind of a parade, every parade you see in Disney World, which is you get to the end and people enjoy it, right? But there's just like this slow trudging line of people behind the the like limbo bar that they use to block off the last float. And it's people just trying to get to their ride or just get to the next thing and they're all crowded and it's just this 
this walk that reminds me of like just like something like metropolis or just some, like just an army of zombies uh and then i remember the end of the second time we saw paint the night and there was a group following that just dancing like it was a dance party that just it was it was felt less like i need to follow this so i can get to my walkway and go to the next thing to like let's keep following the float so it doesn't end right. and that sort of enthusiasm to me was what really stood out and i thought was really special and it's actually funny because that links directly to my number one whoop and it is um not a ride or a show or anything like that it's the people and the enthusiasm that completely blew away my uh, preconceived notions of Disneyland. Uh, I had uh, I had originally thought, oh, this is gonna be a tiny little park. It's gonna be just like a tiny version of Disney World. And the size thing, kind of, I was caught off guard. It's so much larger than I thought it was. But the people are so much more enthusiastic. And I was talking about this with uh, my friend Kelso today, but I feel like it's, you go to Disney World, it's safe to say 95% of the people there are out of state families who are on vacation. And this is their one time a year or every couple of years that they ever, go. You know, so yeah. it's just and, one time and that's it. Yeah, you know? they go and that's it. And and it comes with all of the stresses of a vacation or a family trip. Whereas, like, I think at Disneyland, it felt like half of the people there were locals who just, that's where they spend their weekend. And they do it because they have an enthusiasm, a general uh, enthusiasm for Disney and Disneyland. And I saw so many people our age wearing Disney shirts and hats in a very unironic way, which, you know, coming from New York City is a weird thing to, to think about because I feel like most people our age around here would be like, Disney, like this big ultra corporation is miserable and lines and expense. Like it's just very jaded mm -hmm. where it's like this was a very genuine and um, lively group and it made it a really cool experience because I felt like everyone around there wanted to be around there. Right. Which was nice. Um, yeah, the way I described it to people is that Disneyland has a culture that Disney World does not have. Yeah. It has this sense of community. Yep. Um, clearly a lot of people go and because locals go so consistently, they, consistently they know each other. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of, there are a lot of Disney World YouTubers and Disneyland YouTubers. I feel like Disneyland YouTubers really know each other and really are friends yeah. because they're there so often. Uh, you know, we saw the social clubs, which is something right. that is very exclusive to Disneyland. I've never seen any. Until I start the Disney World hey, one. I mean, what did we say we were going to call it? Uh, uh, the Tomorrowland Transit Authority. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a very different vibe and not to say it was any better or disney world's any worse it's just a very different, different experience and i mm -hmm. totally agree with you that there was something really especially you and i being as enthusiastic about disney beyond just yeah. the rides and all of that it was there's something really refreshing and almost like i felt very accepted there i felt like i was yeah. in the right place you know it's funny uh people that talk about the prospect of like moving to florida so you can go to disney world all the time and I'm always under the assumption that I would get tired of it if I was able to go that often. Mm -hmm. But I, when I think about the ability to do that in California, I don't know if I would get as tired as quickly. And, and that's weird because there's less there, so there's less variety. Right. But I think part of it is the, the community where it's like you – I think they go for the other people as much as they go for the rides and, you know, things like that. But uh, there you have it. Our top three Disneyland experiences. Um it was a really cool trip. We've definitely already talked about when we're going to go back because even though we did nearly everything, it was just cool enough that we want to do more. But what I want to know is, what are your top three Disneyland experiences if you've gone there? If you haven't gone there, what are the top three that you're hoping for? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Uh, if you want to see more Disney content, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Rob Plays. Christine's got a channel. She's got all of her Disney content and her video game content, and she's going to throw out all the usernames now. Yes. Uh, Whoop. <laughs> you can find me on YouTube at Ivy Winner. You can find me on Twitter, Ivy Winner YT. I'm actually starting to push out the vlogs from this trip, so if you want to actually yep. see more of like what Rob and Keith and I did every day, you can check that out. Mm -hmm. And if you want to see more about just Disneyland in general, we just kicked off a series called Disney World vs. Disneyland where we take the attractions that we've ridden in both parks and we compare them. We talk about what Disneyland's experience like, what Disney World's experience like, and then we each pick which our favorite is and we talk about why. So you get more of a Disneyland feel there. 
Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a great week. Whatever you're doing, make the most of it because it makes it that much better. I hope to see you next time for the next Disney Top 3. Bye. 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 Rip. I was warping out of there. Rip. 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 Oh, we're lost. Rip. 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 Oh, no. It's a time warp loop. Rip. Rip. Rip.